This is the ultimate picture scraper, and I built it because I wanted it to work on a bunch of sites, not just one or two or five or ten. And I also wanted to give the end user the ability to be able to scrape from sites that they want to scrape from. And I'm not really going to touch on that too much in this video, but just know that it is possible to add in your own settings for different sites so that you can scrape sites that nobody else can, really. But I talked about that in the first video I made for this, and it really brought on a lot of confusion about what this does. So instead, I'm going to show you what probably most of the people who purchase this are going to use it for, and that is just using the sites that I provide you with. So currently, there are eight in the list, and they are DeviantArt, Facebook fan pages, GIFBin, uh, Imager, Minus, Pinterest, Tumblr, and WeHeartIt. And most of these, as you can see, are the search URLs, and that's because I wanted to make something that you could just load in a bunch of keywords for. So I'm going to show you how this works. So, under Tools, you can load in proxies if you wish. It supports public and private proxies. And so you just choose a site. I'm going to choose Pinterest. And then hit Load Settings. It's going to ask if you want to copy the search URL into the URL maker. So I'm going to hit Yes. And then it's just going to tell you where the URL maker is. And so... Here's the URL maker. You can paste in a list of keywords here. So I'm just going to use two for this video. You can also generate numbers because some sites will have uh, different pages. For Pinterest, over here, you can scroll down the page because it has infinite scroll. So each scroll of the page is loading another page. So it supports both of those. And if you have multiple words in the keyword like kitten kitten socks I don't know if that's a thing or not but if it were uh, you could you would add in a plus sign here to replace the space in the URL for Pinterest and for most of the sites it's like that so I'm just gonna click make URLs and hit replace since there's nothing there and then all you need to do is uh, set the thread count and click on find images now, if you use proxies, obviously you'll want to tick this box. Clear results will clear this results box before running. Uh, if you're just doing a bunch of things or testing a bunch of things and you want to clear it each time, that's fine. Otherwise, it'll leave them there. That way you can go out and you can scrape as many sites as you want, different keywords, whatever, and then hit download. So I'm just going to show you uh, what this does with a few quick e examples. So it went out and it, it found all the pin URLs first because it's going to scrape the larger URL. So it's now going to each pin individually and finding the larger image. So all said and done with two keywords on Pinterest, it'll be close to 100, somewhere probably between 90 and 100. Um, but I'm not going to let it run that long because it's going to take too long. So let's just get a few here and hit stop and end up scraping 26 images. And the 736X does mean they're the larger ones, and the smaller ones, I believe it's 192X. So let's just choose another site and, you know, scrape some more images. This time I want to scrape some, uh, some GIFs, or GIFs, however you say that. So let's just go back to the URL maker. And this time let's just do funny, I'm going to clear this out, and I'm going to replace the URLs again, and just click Find Images. I like to set the threads at like 10 because the first for this first initial scrape, it's just going to this one URL. If we had 10 URLs there, then it'd be using 10 threads. But now it can only be using one. However, once it gets those, uh, the link from those to get to the second page where the larger image is located, it's now using 10 threads because it's opening up 10 pages at a time, one for uh, each of the images. So this scrapes two levels deep, basically. So it's, it's scraping the larger images again. 
And again, I'm just going to let it run for a minute and hit stop. All right. So we've now scraped from two different sites. And you can see the images there. And this is GIF bin, so they're all going to be GIFs. So I'm going to keep the image name and click on Download Images. It's going to ask me what I want to name the folder. Um, I actually used two separate niches, or well, really three completely different niches too, but I'm just going to call them funny pics because let's just say they were all related and hit OK. And then it's going to download using 10 threads again, and it's going to create a folder in this inside of your application folder called images. And inside of that, it's going to create this folder called pics. So let's do that. And it downloads pretty quickly. Just give this a few more seconds and it should finish up. Now for each individual thread, it has a timeout and it can go up to somewhere around 60 seconds. So, you know, if it, if it seems to be hanging on something, just, just wait a minute and it'll finish up. Overall, um, it's pretty stable. And so you should be able to download thousands of pictures at once. Okay, so it's finished now. And we can open this up. There's our funny pics folder. And here are all of our pictures. And they're going to be the larger ones. See? And then some of these are GIFs. So, and there's a GIF from GIFBin. So that's just a quick overview of the Ultimate Picture Scraper, and I'll probably be making some more videos on this uh, later on, showing some of the other functionalities, like, for example, how to customize this. The reason I left these in there is so if you do want to customize uh, or create your own sites, you can use this little area, and you can define, you know, whether to click on a link or to scrape that first picture instead of going two levels deep. Some sites don't need to be going. And then you can select the element by the class or ID, say what it is, say whether or not it's a parent element. And if you know HTML, it's really not that bad. Uh, and then just hit save settings. And then if you, uh, the next time you load up the program, it will be in this list. So I don't want to confuse people though. And I did that in the last video. So I'm just going to leave it at this for now. So this is the Ultimate Picture Scraper. Thanks for watching.